show to get through. Oh, yes, we do. And uh, speaking of shows, you know, when you watch TV, especially the uh, family shows, you get the impression that every once in a while, a father is supposed to sit his son down and give him a lesson about life. That's right. Uh, unfortunately, though, in real life, it never really seems to happen. No, still hasn't for me. The only words of wisdom my father ever offered, and this is true, we're on a family trip, and we stopped to eat at a, a filthy little diner somewhere in the middle of Arizona, and he said, Jimmy... When in doubt, order hamburger. Yeah, thanks, Yoda. Uh, let me write that down in the family Bible for future Kimmel generations to absorb. Yeah, your dad was a real Socrates. Yes, yeah. he was. The closest I ever got to fatherly advice was from my friend Don's dad, who told me, excuses are like assholes. Everyone has one, and they all stink. <laughs> that... That is not advice. That's a fishing hat. Yeah. <laughs> but we can't blame our fathers. A dad's main job is to teach you how to throw a baseball. And that I learned. Everything else, sex, work, school, women, I figured out on my own. Yes. If you're looking for advice, your best bet is still TV. And that's where I come in. Yeah. Think of me. Thank you. Think of me as your TV father. Dad him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> To help you with the tough decisions, we put together this important educational series titled, What Would Adam Do? The Man Show presents, What Would Adam Do? You're visiting your mother-in-law. She's out of toilet paper. Do you, A, use your favorite magazine, or B, use your sock? What would Adam do? Before you get excited and start writing letters, that was not a real cat. We used a... No, that, that was a real cat. <laughs> okay. Turns out that was a real cat, but seriously, who cares? There's like 50 million of those goddamn things. This is the man show. <laughs> Fragrance from the creators of The Man Show. A night out on the town. For him. Him. With you here by my side. For her. Her. And her drunk bisexual friend. Bisexual friend. I'm so When we come back, a visit to the Museum of Annoying Guys. It's the Man Show.
The Man Show, you know, they say it takes all kinds to make the world go round. That is true. However, there are more than a few kinds we could do without. And as a public service, we've captured, tagged, and classified them here in the Museum of Annoying Guys. <laughs> If you're a frequent flyer, then you frequently cross paths with our first annoying guy. It's the male stewardess who thinks he's a comedian. <laughs> yes, scientific name, flight attendant Joka Suckus. Ladies and jelly beans, I'd like to be the first to welcome you to Maui. <laughs> Unfortunately, we've landed in Cleveland. <laughs> he's, he's 40, he's tan, and he's hilarious. In just a few minutes, we'll be handing out some snacks. But that reminds me, did you hear about the two peanuts walking down the street? One was assaulted. Ow! Hey, uh, queen of comedy, when you're done with your set, I'll take that Bloody Mary I ordered somewhere over Idaho. <laughs> he just flew in from San Francisco, and boy, is his ass tired. <laughs> For those of you seated near a window, if you take a look outside the left side of the aircraft, you'll see a very important landmark. Oh, there it is. My apartment. Guys, right. take note. Right. There yeah. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> Have a nice flight. <laughs> right. Moving on, you can find our next specimen at just about any intersection in America. It's the running in place guy. <laughs> Yeah, scientific name, Jagas Nonstopus. The light is red, but this guy isn't going to let his pulse drop for even a second. Now, I, I usually spot this guy around 6 a.m. when I'm driving home after a long night of drinking, smoking, and pie-gow poker. <laughs> you, think, you think when he's talking on the phone and someone puts him on hold, he goes like this? You better keep moving, pal, because one of these days I'm going to hop the curb and run your chariots of fire ass into a mailbox. <laughs> All right. For me personally, our next asshole is among the most heinous. Next time you're at a strip club, look over your shoulder and you're likely to find this annoying guy. It's the guy who sits there and stares during your lap dance. <laughs> Did he pay his 20 bucks so he can get just as much looking at you? Yes, yeah, scientific name, Hardonum Gratis. And I gotta say, Ooh. personally, there's nothing more disturbing than when I have an erection and I look up to see a guy drooling. This is definitely a violation of the strip club Geneva Convention. Hey, I'll be banging my wife later if you want to stop by and check that out, too. Moving oh. along. There's only one thing worse than a man who feels the need to accessorize. And that is the man who accessorizes with a live animal. It's the guy with a big snake around his neck. Scientific name, Boa Comprica. You've, you've seen him at the beach and at the boardwalk soaking up all the vicarious attention Mr. Slither can attract. Look at me. I bought my personality at the pet store. Play your cards right, ladies, and maybe he'll let you watch the snake eat a squirrel black at his place. Yeah. Hey, uh, yo, Tarzan, uh, just because you dropped 300 bucks at the reptile zone don't make you king of the jungle. No, it does not. All right, and finally, the next time you're in Las Vegas, steer clear of this annoying guy. Wait, wait, it's a, it's a pot, you grow your pot. Scientific name. Like that. See when you're in your graffiti, you're like, you don't yeah. get busted from yeah. weight. Scientific oh, name, Carrot Poppus. Okay. There you go. Why don't we get you in? Yeah, there you go. That's right. There we go. All right. All right. All right. Why don't we? We're we sorry could, you had to see that. If we could get a welder's torch to keep this sealed <laughs> and then take it to the ocean, we'll be set. <laughs> All right. That was the Museum of Annoying Guys, guys. The Man Show. We'll be right back. <laughs> Oh, 
I like that. During the, uh, <laughs> during the videotape, one of the guys in the audience said, that's funny, Adam. <laughs> All right. yeah. That was me throwing my voice. All right. Now, part of the show where you, the drunken studio audience, ask questions of us, the drunken hosts. We call it Q&A. And uh, our first question, uh, Harry Long. Where's Harry? <laughs> Harry Long. Guy, it's the guy behind the tuba. Right. Is that your real name? Uh, yes, it is. Is it really? Uh, his yeah. real name's Dick Nibbler, but he, <laughs> he changed it. <laughs> Didn't like the ridicule. All right. Uh, Harry asks, how is it okay for women to breastfeed in public, but it is considered un-PC for me to masturbate in public? <laughs> <laughs> You've been wanting to masturbate in public? or? Uh... Yeah, kind of, sort of. You yeah. kind of, sort of. Oh. Uh, here, here's your opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Guys in the band, you might want to take off your hats. <laughs> All right, have a seat there, Harry. Um, Doug Stanley, where's Doug Stanley? Doug? Oh, there he is. Oh, this is a good question. Why can't Adam chug a whole beer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> First off, I, I see Doug's a fitness freak like you are, Jimmy. <laughs> Because, you know, I mean, if you'll notice, you know, if when it comes time to drink the beer. All right. Oh, yeah. 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 I drink the whole thing. And Adam barely finishes half of his beer. Yeah. Yeah. I guess he doesn't want to get his ballet shoes wet. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> you, you? You know the only reason I can't chug the beer is because I'm so effed up on heroin that I can't... <laughs> I can't find my mouth. <laughs> Mike Cronin. Where's Mike Cronin? Mike? Hey, Mike. Mike uh, asks, if I'm sleeping and I wake up and I'm getting a Hummer, and I'm guessing that happens a lot. <laughs> At the drunk tank. Yeah. <laughs> Do I open my eyes to see who it is? <laughs> Now, it's always going to be disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care if Heather Locklear's down there, you're going to be disappointed. Yeah, and if you feel a beard brushing up against you, <laughs> run. <laughs> Never look a gift horse in the mouth. That's right, right. that's right. And it, did this happen to you? Not yet. Not yet, okay. <laughs> just, just preparing for the future. Don't worry, I'm sure it's in the cards. Um, <laughs> and finally, Rachel and Ronnie. Where are Rachel and Ronnie? Rachel and Ronnie. Oh, wait, a, look at that. What can we do to get with you? Can we sit on your lap? Please. I, I told you this table would pay off one day. You mean us? Yes, you. Hmm, let me think about this. Now, if you were to come sit on our laps, that would mean your ass would be against our penises. <laughs> what do you what? think? Wow. Oh, what the heck? Come yeah. on. Nice. You know, listen, <laughs> we're not going to do this for all the ladies, that's but... That's right. Only Rachel, 95% of them. That's right. All right. Well, I see you guys have beer. I don't no, know. No, she needs good. a beer. She Girl. needs a beer? All oh, right. Yeah, I need a refill. I need a beer, too. So if we could get a quick refill here. Oh, there you go. In fact, let's not make it quick. Take your time. Oh, thank you. That's, hey. that's very kind. Uh, you don't have herpes, thank do you? you no. very okay, much. good. Good. All right. You will, you will soon. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody, ziggy zaggy ziggy zaggy 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 zaggy
Go Zuna!